There are two main ways to build wealth. Work exceptionally hard for your money or get your money to work exceptionally hard for you. And you get to do this by investing. And the thing about investing is, it's not about how much money you have to invest. It's about your discipline in investing regularly and patience to give your money the time it needs to do what it needs to do. Watch this video to find out why you should have started investing yesterday. But spoiler alert, the next best day is today. Hi there, welcome to my channel. Let's talk money and getting more of it. Your money mainly grows in two ways. You could of course steal it or you may win the lottery or you may have got lucky enough to have an inheritance. But if not, you make your money by spending your time working for it. Or you get your hard earned money working for you. Now the limitations on the first one are obvious. You only have so many hours in the day. The opportunities on the second one are only limited by your imagination. And your imagination could come up with countless ways of building wealth. But before even going down that route, there is a simple method. Investing in the stock market. Now you may ask, why should I invest in the stock market when I'm saving? Well, savings are great and they do serve a purpose. But the truth of the matter is the return on your savings is not going to get you to your money goals. The return on the average saving account in the UK is between 0.6 to 1.3% at the moment. And the inflation rate, which is the rate at which the cost of goods and services is increasing, is 2%. So the longer you leave your money in a savings account, the more value it's losing. In other words, you are earning 1% in your savings account and yet the things that you are buying are increasing in cost by 2%. On the other hand, if we take a look at the performance of the stock market, and I've just selected the S&P 500 in the US, which is an index of the top 500 companies, since its inception, it has returned on average 10% per year. Now, this is a lot better way for achieving your money goals, don't you think? Your next question may be the obvious one. How do I find which shares to invest in? Well, there is a simple approach and it doesn't involve trawling through the internet trying to find those star shares that you should be investing in. You don't have to be an investment guru to start investing. And although the financial community is overrun with jargon, there are service providers who have recognized there's a gap in the market for simple and transparent investment vehicles and they're coming onto the market literally on a daily basis. The choices, however, can become a little bit overwhelming. And there are some guidelines you can follow that will help you on your investment journey. Number one is you want to look out for those low cost options. The return you're making will start looking a little less attractive when you realize how much you're paying away in fees. So you want to minimize the fees you're paying on an ongoing basis. Number two, diversification and this is simply don't put all your eggs in one basket you want to be diversified from an asset perspective but possibly also a geographic perspective now looking at the asset perspective we've had a look at shares in the s p 500 and you can see from that graph how the shares prices go up and down and they're pretty volatile so you want to add some other assets to your portfolio that may not do the same things as shares. In other words, they may be a little less volatile. For example, bonds. Bonds are like a loan to a company or a government for a fixed rate of return. And so they tend to be a little less risky than shares. And so when the shares are falling in price, bonds tend to be rising or staying stable. The third thing is, you really want your portfolio to match your risk tolerance. And this question is, can I sleep at night if my portfolio drops by 35% over a very short space of time? And this is exactly what happened this year in March 2020, when the stock market in general fell by 35%. And if you are thinking 
wow, I'd be pretty freaked out by that. You are not alone. And so as a result, you'll try and add some of those lower risk assets to your portfolio to even out the periods when your shares are down. And this may dilute your return, but it's a small price to pay to make sure you can sleep at night and ease your fears around your investment. The fourth thing is, you want to keep it simple. So you want it to be easy to do, you want it to be transparent, but overriding everything, you want to understand exactly what you are investing in. So how do I get started? Maybe your next obvious question. And there are three easy ways to do so. Number one is the robo advisors. Now these are online investment managers with very little human interaction on the other side. You basically register on the platform, you put in your money goal, your timeline and your risk tolerance and the robo advisor pops out with a portfolio for you. Now the advantage is you can get started with the minimal amount to invest. In other words, from 100 pounds and in some cases, even less on some of these platforms. The second thing is it's quite simple because there's not a lot of choice. And that is also a disadvantage is that there is not a lot of choice. The second option is to register on Vanguard or Fidelity, Charles Schwab or Hargreaves Vansdown in the UK and select one of their life strategy portfolio funds. And these will basically be very similar to the robo advisors in that you select your time frame, you put in your risk tolerance, but there will be a much wider choice. And the disadvantage is possibly also having to have a little bit of a larger initial investment. And the third option is the do it yourself option. And this you can do on a Charles Schwab, Fidelity, um, Hargreaves Lansdowne in the UK, Interactive Investor. Basically you get registered on the platform and you select your own portfolio. And the way to do this is to select from the universe that they have of passive investment index trackers. So you get started on your platform, you select your approach, you establish a monthly debit order that you can afford in terms of your other costs, and you leave the investment. And the magic begins, and that is it. You may have decided you want to think about it a bit more, Excellent. Take time to do the research, to understand the options and to select the approach that's most suitable to you. But if you are still hesitant about getting started, consider this. In option one, you decide to start investing at the age of 25, you invest £100 per month earning a nice 10% per annum and you do so for 10 years. And then you get a bit bored of it and so you stop investing and you forget about your investment for the next 30 years. In option two, you only start investing 10 years later at 35, but you're quite diligent and you invest £100 per month, earning the same 10% return for the next 30 years. Under which option are you going to do better? We'll take a look at this graphic and it is very clear. Under option one, you contributed 12,000 in cash, but your investment 40 years later is worth 388,000. In option two, despite the fact you put in 36,000 of cash, your investment is worth 217,000 pounds. That's almost 170,000 pounds less than lazy option one. So clearly from this, it's all about your time in the market. So get started, maybe today. If you're interested in investing, I've included an investing guide below, Investing One on One to get an idea of what needs to be done. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting like, share it with other ladies who want to change their financial story, and for more Money Talk Design for Women, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified of when I post new videos. It's been fantastic chatting to you today and I hope I get to speak to you again in the future.